Or verse 22, watch this. For everything that is hidden will eventually be what? Everything that is hidden will eventually be brought to light. Now, folks, this is not talking about because you have a secret sin that somehow it's going to come out. That's not what we're talking about. That is the furthest thing from what we're talking about right here. It has absolutely nothing to do with what Jesus is saying right here. He's saying that the word starts working privately before it shows up publicly. Amen. It starts working in the unseen place. And then it shows up in your actual life in the form of results. Does that make sense? There's been times where we've cast out demons. And there's times where we've laid hands on people that have been demon possessed and say, in Jesus' name, devil, you go and you come out now. And you know what the person did? Watch this. Nothing. No moving. No foaming. No jerking. No bucking. No none of that. Now, does it happen where people do move and jerk? Absolutely. But when it does it, what's happening? When there's no movement, what's happening? The word is still working. What you said is still working. Oftentimes you'll hear that person come back and you'll find out that that person went home and threw up or something and legitimately the devil came out of them, but you couldn't see it. It starts working where you can't see and then it shows up in the natural. When you sow your seed... When you start believing the word of God, declaring the word of God in your situation concerning your family, your relationships, your employment, your environment, it starts working even though you don't see it because you said it. Amen. You've got to believe that it's working even though you don't see it. Yes. Say it anyways. Are you with me? Okay, I'm almost done. I know you're hungry. You have to go sleep and do whatever. Most church people on Sunday ain't going home doing nothing anyways. Go home, sit in front of the TV. That's all you're going to do. Go with it. Uh, now, let me, let me move. Now, verse, 20, verse 24. Then he added, and I'm going to read this in King James Version. He said unto him, unto them, take heed what ye hear. What about it? For take heed what ye hear. With what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you. And unto, unto you that hear shall more be given. That's heavy. Now, that statement, take heed what ye hear. When you look up the word what in the Greek, it does have significance. In this context, some of the translation of the use of this word in this particular context, as Jesus meant it, would show up this way. Watch this. Take heed what specific word you hear. Now, we're talking about a field that grows seeds. If I need corn, then what kind of seed do I plant? Corn seed. If I need potatoes, I plant potatoes. Is there such thing as a potato seed? I don't know. Right. <laughs> now, green beans. What about that one? <laughs> no, I'm from the city. Well, no, no, no. Now, if I want corn, and I plant squash. What about that? Is that one, Sister Robert? She said, yeah, you can plant that. If I want corn and I plant squash, then what kind of harvest will I get? Am I going to get corn when I plant squash? I'm going to get squash. Now watch. If I need finances, what kind of seed 
Do I need to plant? Huh? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You got to get this. I think you're missing this. I think you're not seeing it. What is the seed? The word is the seed. If I want to get a financial harvest, what kind of seed do I need to plant? Financial word. If I go in there and start hearing and planting this, the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. What's going to happen? You're going to start sinning and the wages of sin is going to be death. <laughs> in that case, you will actually come into fear concerning the wages of sin and you'll come into condemnation and it'll take you further into sin and it'll be very difficult to get out in that particular case. But if I need financial seed, I need to hear a word concerning financial provisional increase subject. Amen. Now, it also says in the Greek here, that word what is take heed who you hear it from. <clears throat> now, let me tell you something. Let me help you understand something. Broke people cannot teach you how to prosper financially. I'll wait for you to swallow that. I'll wait until you get it or until you're not mad, one of the two, whichever one comes quickest. Broke people cannot teach you how to prosper financially. I'm not saying that the person has to be rich but in order to speak or give a word of the kingdom concerning finances, I need to know it and I need to be tasting it so that it is working in my life. Well, what does this mean? Take heed who you hear. You can't listen to preachers or preaching that, does not, that do not believe that it is God's will for you to prosper financially. If you listen to a preacher concerning financial increase that says God is not concerned about your finances, he does not care about money, all he wants you to do is live right and make it to heaven, you may live right and you may make it to heaven, but you will certainly not prosper. Did you get it? Are you still here? Have you gone home? Oh, yeah. Well, let me go back to my safe spot then, which is right here. Here's where, here's where it is. Here's my safe spot. Let me say it again in case I get any emails or text messages or posts that the media team usually tries to uh, delete before I get to them, which is great, Lord be to God, at times. Let, let me say this. Let me say it again so they have something to complain about. Watch this. If the preacher does not preach your need, you as a believer cannot receive it. You and I, once you get born again, are at the mercy of a preached word of the kingdom that pertains to our situation. Is that heavy? Is that heavy? How many, is that heavy? Come on, show hands. Is that a little heavy? A little hard to swallow? It's okay. There's more. There's more. So I need to pay attention what word I'm hearing and who I'm hearing it from. There is no time to mix faith with unbelief. You don't have time to be listening to preaching that is contrary to faith. You don't have time for it. Not if you're going to get the job, the job done and accomplished. See, you and I have been required in the earth to produce. Once you get born again, 
You are not born again just so you cannot go to hell. That is not why you were born again alone. That is a part of it, but you and I were born again so that you could produce and your production would ultimately cause the will of God to be done throughout the whole earth. The way people get saved is by the production of the church, by other believers. It's not where you just sit back and say, well, God's will will be done no matter what. Everything will work. No, 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 no. This is why generations keep passing by without Jesus having returned yet because the Bible says that the end won't come until all the gospel is preached through the earth. The gospel has to be spread. To, for the gospel to be spread, what's the main way the gospel is being spread around the world right now? Anybody know? Is it word of mouth? Through what way? Which is connected to what? The what? The internet, right? Who do you think pays for that? Who do you think pays for people over in the Middle East and Africa and third world countries to hear the gospel. There are churches paying for it. There are men and women of God that owned the satellites, that own the airtime, that own the equipment. And if they did not own it, you know what would happen? It would not be broadcast. Why? Because Satan owns those airwaves or has taken them captive and he doesn't want the gospel preached on it. So the only way the gospel gets preached is that those in the kingdom of God suffer violence and we take it by force. Amen. Well, which believers are taking it by force? Increasing believers. Yeah that are alive for a purpose that are not just going home and you know I say this a lot I know but I gotta say it again just surviving from paycheck to the next paycheck glory to God Lord give us some dreamers some people that are dreaming of changing the world glory be to God some people that will say Lord send me and I'll go to do the impossible if you'll go with me Send me, Lord, there's a thousand people in this remote part of the earth that needs to be rescued with the gospel. Send me. Let me fund it. I will give the money to get the people over there. You see, it's bigger than just you and I coming to church just trying to... Uh, let, me, let me move. Let me move. Let me move. I, I'm... I got four minutes left. We'll be done. Glory to God. Now, if you listen to unbelieving preachers, you will not increase. Do you understand that? You need to become selective in your hearing. Those of you that have been using the word of faith, there's a good portion of you in here that have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about. And, and it's right because I'm not talking to you just yet. But those of you that have been hearing the word of faith, that understand that faith is assurance, that it's a force, that it needs to be used on purpose, that you put it in the eyes and your ears and it comes out of your mouth and you stand against the enemy with it, or those of you that are trying to use it at this point in your life, you need to be selective in what you're hearing. Self-help Books and material won't take you to the supernatural. Amen. They may help you with your discipline, but they're not going to take you where you really need to go in the supernatural. Where Satan is concerned, it's a supernatural battle. You can't fight it naturally. Are you with me? Yes. 